This place is a freaking mess. I gotta do something about it. See? Isn't that better? This thing was a ton of fun to build. Let's figure out how we got here. So you might be wondering, where did this whole idea come from? Two things. One, if you recall from previous old videos, um, there was a janky pool table, ping pong table combo sitting here um, and was a ton of fun with me and the kids, but it didn't really serve its purpose as a workbench per se. The top was cupped. There was no real storage underneath. Uh, and to be honest, I just kind of got sick of it and wanted like a proper workbench. So heave ho away she goes. Two. I have plans to put a fairly large aquarium in this region. The problem with that is I'm going to lose all the pegboard storage and the storage underneath because that's going to be for the aquarium. So this marries up really nicely with the 4x8 and the ATC because I'm going to design this workbench completely out of plywood. Fairly unconventional method for a workbench, but for the production guys out there, the cabinet makers that are doing vanities, kitchen cabinets, that kind of stuff, this is kind of a bit of a standard way of grabbing a four by eight sheet, chucking it on there and going to town. And if you're a hobbyist and you don't have, you know, all of the tools necessary, then the four by eight plus the ATC is going to serve all your purposes. Some of the things I have to think about for this project are, one, this thing is gonna be big. I already bought the sheet of plywood for it. I know it's going to be four by eight, it's going to be heavy. It's going to be chunky. So I have to make sure that my joinery and the way that I attach all of this together is going to be strong enough to support this and anything I throw on top of it. Challenge number two, I don't want to use sliders. Those things are expensive and I'm planning for like 10, 12, 14 drawers on this thing. That's going to add up. So I'm going to use a different method. Can you guess what it is instead of sliders? And challenge number three comes directly from the ultimate alt mill. I want to level up my actual drawer construction this time. I haven't figured out if I'm going to use the box creator gadget, maybe some locking rabbits or some other method. I got to figure that out still. We got the plywood, it's time to build. All right, so right now I have to do the testing for my little drawer handles that I wanna put in them. Uh, I'm not gonna put poles, I'm gonna actually carve into the, the front of the, the drawer. Uh, I'm using a round over bit and I've never used one of those and I've never really used the ATC um, so my workflow is probably a little bit off. So I'm just learning on the fly and trying not to break stuff. Okay, first carve, I again haven't used that round over bit, so I just have my depth too deep. So it like, it, it didn't gouge it, it did what it was told to do, but it's too deep. So I made it a little bit shallower and that was it. So we're gonna experiment twice and see if it works. For this project, I modeled the entire thing in 3ds Max. This was really important because it allowed me to not only um, tinker with the design as I went along and make changes and revisions, but it allowed me to plan out my cuts because I knew exactly what I was going to need. The other amazing part about modeling this whole thing in 3D and being able to go back to it was just that. I was able to reference my model and I have a feeling that at some point during the build, this is gonna be a really handy thing to have because I'm probably gonna make a mistake and I'm gonna wonder where I went wrong and I'll have my model to go back and show me where I made a mistake. Testing's all done, everything looks good. I'm gonna keep tinkering with a few things that I don't quite like and then tomorrow's the big cut day, so we're gonna rip through a whole bunch of plywood. You can see here, we've got a whole bunch of bits for this project. Uh, I'm looking really forward to this because I get to like put them all together, load them in the ATC. First bit, not necessarily in order, is the 3 8 compression with chip breaker. That's going to be used for all of those big heavy outline cuts just to mow through. It'll go quick. It's big and beefy. Second bit, 
quarter inch compression bit. This is gonna go in to do those little dog bones that we need because the three eighths won't fit. It's just literally gonna go in, zip, zip, do the dog bone, done. Third quarter inch down cut. That is going to be used to make all the pockets and all the little parts for the drawers that we need in order to fit everything together for those locking rabbits. Eighth inch carbide drill bit. That is going to be used in certain spots where I know I want uh, screws to go in. So I'm just gonna let the machine pre-drill those holes for me. So when I go to assemble it, drill holes are done. The 60 degree V bit, this is actually, again, the ATC luxury that I really love because I'm going to have labels actually carved into each piece because there's so many that look similar that by having just a little label on each piece where it's not going to be seen on the inside of a drawer face or something, um, that's super handy for sorting out the jigsaw puzzle that this thing is going to be when I'm done cutting. So that's all that's there for, just for labels. And last but certainly not least, the 3 8 roundover bit. This is for my little drawer handles. I don't want actual manual, like, pulls on the outside. So I'm just gonna cut a little swoopy in and I'm gonna have this round over come in and make a nice smooth edge. So when I go to pull, good to go. Sheet number one, loaded, zeroed, all the ATC stuff loaded in there and probed. Nothing more than to hit go time. seven of 10 sheets in. We had some hiccups to start, adjusted some feeds and some speeds, added some extra screw holes to make life a little bit easier for when you're actually cutting these out. I'm gonna power through these and the next time you see me, we're gonna be assembling the sucker in my shop. So until then. How's the old saying go? You can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. I feel like I've broken a few dozen eggs. So let me spin around. We'll show you where we're at. Old table saw out new baby table saw in ton of space saved the shop is still an absolute train wreck luckily everything in the shop is on wheels so more or less i'm able to move things around without too much trouble but it's future proofing and planning the space that i'm now kind of getting a little antsy about because i don't want to have to do this again every you know year or every two years so i have no idea what the future holds i really don't if i did this would be a lot easier so when i come back hopefully i'll have a better plan and i will share that with you peace out friday look what i'm doing all righty it's been a hot minute since we've been back at my shop to do a project I have one simple mission today. Sand, stain, and glue. Sand, stain, and glue. There's a whole lot of plywood that has to get sanded, stained, and glued. Let's get her done.
end of another long day. Sanding's done. Staining is done. I didn't get to clear coat. I wanted to do that tonight, but I'm exhausted and it's already late. So I'll give you a quick tour of what I got done today. And then tomorrow is assembly day. So I'm excited because I might actually have a functioning workbench. Whoop. There's my little helper. So we got all these pieces stained up. Full sides built. Zip around here, another piece. Drawers. Spacers. More pieces here. It's like I've got five workbenches to make one workbench, ironically enough. And there's some stuff there, and there's still some stuff. Yep, and there's still some stuff there. So, tomorrow's a big day. You got anything to say? Hey there, Sam Sarah. This is going to be a great workbench. Oh, wow. That was right on the money, eh? Yeah, I stole your line. You stole my line. Can you try it with a little, like, zip when you say it? Hey there, Sam Sears! Good enough. Until tomorrow. Okay, we've got most of the subframe kind of put in. This big guy is going to be a nice shelf across the back before these two big suckers slot in here. Um, so this is kind of like the nice open area. My shop back can hang out here. I've got a shelf for in here. You know, construction. Oh. Oh. All right, so we've got this Teflon tape that we are going to use because we have plywood slides for the bottom, right? So there's no drawer slides. This stuff is super slippery. We're gonna put it on top of our slides it literally is just like scotch tape. You just stick it down, cut it, and then uh, that's it. It makes opening the drawer much easier than if it was just friction-y plywood on plywood. So here we are, my drawers. I asked earlier in the video uh, if you had an idea what I was gonna use instead of slides and how I was going to actually construct them and level up my game from the Ultimate Altmel ones. And here's my solution. There's no slides. The plywood bottom is the slide. And then I used, it's called a locking rabbit. And it's really quite simple, but really quite handy. It's literally just a dado on both boards. It locks together. It's the simplest thing ever, but they're really strong. And once I glue it and nail it, these things aren't going anywhere. I love this system. For this monstrosity of a workbench, there are 13 drawers. I've put 13 drawers together and call it an hour and a half, maybe two hours tops. Super simple, clean, easy, and strong. What else can you ask for? So what do we hope that you take away from this video? First, let's start with the ATC side of things. The first thing about the ATC that is super fun is remapping. Long story short, if you forget to assign a number to your bit in your CAD CAM software, you can manually remap it within G Sender. Super handy, super easy, couple button pushes and you're off and running again. Number two thing about the ATC that I learned along this project was uh, there's different workflows. So do you wanna change tools manually? Do you wanna go completely automated? and a couple of things in between. So um, it sounds a little daunting, but it's not as bad once you start to understand it, but I definitely, there was a learning curve to it. And the third thing about the ATC that I kind of learned going through this project was it's not nearly as intimidating as you think it is. You get in there and there's 12 tools and there's remapping and there's manual changes. There's a lot of stuff to figure out, but it's not nearly as intimidating once you start doing it. And I've never really used the ATC before, so it was a good trial by fire. 
Um, got in there, designed my stuff, made mistakes, and worked my way through it. So you might be intimidated when you first start or when you're thinking about it, but it's not as bad once you're in the seat and actually trying it. As far as the actual project goes, there were things I liked, things I didn't like, and things that I would probably consider changing. As far as the design changes that you might want to consider, uh, when I went to put the top on, I realized that it's just basically getting screwed in. And I used this kind of interlocking technique throughout the rest of the bench. And I was really annoyed that I missed that opportunity for the tabletop. So the horns that are on the side and the bottom of the top, I would have put some nubs and some pockets so that that actually locked it into place when you put it on there. Does it still function without it? Absolutely. But if you're talking about like making the best design possible, that's something you might want to consider. For the things that I, I guess I'm on the fence or I learned and wished I would have done artwork. Uh, the Ultimate Alt Mill got some really cool artwork treatments, some graphics, and I debated really hard about whether or not, so this is a total personal choice, uh, whether or not you want to do it. I wish I could commit to putting, you know, words on the drawers perhaps of what's in them, but I just couldn't commit to it. And the Ultimate Alt Mill is kind of like the artsy thing, and this is like the workhorse. So I debated, but ultimately decided no artwork. The second thing I wish I would have done is something I wholeheartedly wish I would have done and I dropped the ball on, and that is just being more thoughtful about my screw placement and having pilot holes done on the CNC. Does it ruin the workbench? Absolutely not, but I wish I would have spent a little more time thinking about how I was actually going to physically fasten it together, not just how it was going to connect together. And now I wanna tell you about the things I really do love about this workbench. Aside from it being the nicest workbench I've ever had, um, two big things stood out for me. One, the plywood sliders, as I'm gonna call them, instead of having drawer slides, work really, really well, shockingly well. That little strip of Teflon tape, and even without the Teflon tape, they open really nicely because I sanded them. So don't let anybody tell you that plywood drawers aren't like a great option. The second thing I really liked about the workbench was the locking rabbits for the drawers. They were easy to create, they were easy to put together, and from what I'm seeing so far, I've got a couple of these drawers pretty loaded. They're plenty strong for what I'm going to use this thing for. So it's a really nice method. It's easy to do and it goes together quickly. I don't know what else you could ask for. I really enjoyed the challenge of designing an unconventional workbench. Um, what it reinforced to me is that cabinets, drawers, vanities, all that stuff, this is kind of how they are designed. And with the right tools, it becomes pretty easy to do. Don't forget, we are handing out the complete plans and files for this project. We'll put the link in the description below. So if you are interested in building your own or modifying what we've done, you can do it yourself. Now that you've seen my workbench come together, I wanna know what you would do differently. Suggestions, ideas, designs. Maybe you incorporate some sort of power management into it that I didn't. Maybe your whole table becomes an outfit table for your table saw. Regardless, we want to hear about it. Make sure you put in the comments below your design ideas and suggestions. We'd love to see what you do with ours. We have lots more inspiring CNC projects coming out all the time. I definitely underestimated how much organization within the shop this thing was going to unleash for me. So for now, I'm going to go get to cleaning up this mess. Until next time, we'll see you around the CNC.